Good afternoon, Heritage Hill. Man, it's, I'm so glad to be with you today and to bring to you Hope from the Hill, the first in a series of devotionals that we are going to be sharing with one another through the Holy Week uh, as we look forward to Easter. Today, our scripture is found in John chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. You know, everybody needs a place of rest, a place to relax and to enjoy the fellowship of friends. For Jesus, it was often in Bethany at the home of Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus. Bethany is located about two miles east of Jerusalem on the eastern slope of the Mount of Olives. Jesus was on his way to the cross. And here we find him coming to the home of his friends to find a few brief hours of encouragement and support from his disciples. The majority of of which would soon abandon him. This passage teaches us quite a bit about how we honor Jesus. The first is that we should honor Jesus in our homes. Look at verse 1. Notice how welcome Jesus is. It was a place where his friends were, a place where he felt welcome, a place where he could rest. No doubt, Jesus at times grew weary and looked forward to these times of hanging out, here was a home in which Jesus was, without any doubt, the honored guest. A question every Christian needs to ask is, how welcome is Jesus in my home? How would it change our attitudes or our actions or maybe even our arguments? Something that we should think about. A second way is that we need to honor Jesus from our heart. Notice that verse 2 and 3, we find that three different people mentioned, Martha, Lazarus, and Mary. Uh, it's interesting to note that each of these followers of Jesus had different passion, a different disposition of heart, and how they would choose to honor Jesus. Let's look at Martha first. For Martha, honoring Jesus meant serving him. Doing what she loved to do, doing what she knew best, cooking and serving. Counselors today might tell you that that was her love language. That's how she would go about expressing her love to Jesus through the very gift of cooking and cleaning, taking care of him and serving him that way. Because that was her gift to Jesus. It's a valid expression of her love and devotion. But it was not the only valid expression of love and devotion to Jesus. Second, we have Lazarus. Scripture simply says about Lazarus that he was one of those reclining at the table with him. Lazarus simply wanted to enjoy his presence. He wanted to fellowship with him, to talk with him, to ask him questions, to listen to him speak. He wanted to enjoy every minute that he had with the master. Man, there is nothing wrong with simply enjoying being in the presence of God. There are times and places where we are to be still and to know that He is God. There are seasons that we simply enjoy fellowship with our Lord. That's what Lazarus was, was doing. He was enjoying fellowship with Jesus. But third, third, there's Mary. Wow. The sister of Martha and Lazarus. Instead of serving Jesus food, Instead of simply enjoying a conversation with him, Mary moved with love for the Savior, wanted to demonstrate her devotion in a more dramatic way. Martha and Lazarus both loved Jesus, and for them their response was perfectly normal. But Scripture shows us that what Mary felt led to do went way beyond what the others had done. You see, she took a pound of nard, and she anointed his feet with it and wiped his feet with her hair. And the odor of the ointment filled the house. Notice several things about what Mary did in anointing Jesus. First, she gave her very best. They say it was a year's wages. She poured out with total abandon the most valuable possession that she had. That's how much she loved Jesus. Secondly, 
She was willing to be humble, uh, humble herself in order to honor him. To pour a precious ointment on someone else's feet is one thing, but to wipe it with your hair is a completely another thing. One commentator has noted that since a woman's hair is her glory, that she was laying her glory at his feet. She was giving up her pride and she was worshiping him and honoring him in humility. Mary also worshiped despite criticism. Judas disapproved. Imagine that. When you love Jesus like Mary did, you don't care what other people say. All that matters is demonstrating the love that you have for Jesus. Mary doesn't care what others think. She doesn't care how public it is or how much it might humiliate her. She is there to worship Jesus and she doesn't let anyone get in her way. One more thing that you should notice about Mary's worship, and it is found also found in verse 3. The scripture says that the odor filled the house. The perfume got into everything. It saturated her hair. It filled the house with an aroma. That is what true worship does. It leaves its scent on you and on everyone around you. Finally, notice that we are to honor Jesus when the opportunity is at hand. After Judas complains, Jesus corrects him, telling him to leave Mary alone, that this is exactly what should be happening. Jesus is telling us that we should honor him, we should worship and adore him whenever the opportunity presents itself. Mary did not put Jesus on her schedule. She did it when the opportunity presented itself. She was ready and eager to honor him, and he was able to do so at a moment's notice. While others around her were serving food or simply enjoying his company, Mary was absorbed in worship. Does Jesus get honor and glory from your life? Is he honored in your home? Would he feel comfortable at your dinner table? Or would he feel at home with what you watch or read or listen to? Do you honor him from your heart? Is your worship heartfelt? Are you looking for opportunities in your everyday experience to bring honor and glory to Christ? Take the vial from your Holy Week box. Open it up. Smell its fragrance. Let it remind you that true worship leaves its fragrance on you as well as everyone and everything around you. Father God, would you receive genuine, passionate love from us as we worship you? And may our worship be a fragrance rising before you and saturating everything around us, just as Mary's was. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you, Heritage Hill. See you tomorrow.